that uh, that report. And during that period, we have uh, the number of NGC that we have during that period was at around 300. And now we have over 1,000 agencies. And uh, you know, and now we are talking about scrapping the uh, agency. So scrapping the uh, some of the agency might look like a tall order. However, let's give President Bola Medinubu that uh, opportunity. Uh, let's trust him that he's going to do something. But for me, uh, I think it's late now to say we want to go back from 300 to 250. Now we have about 1,000. So are we coming down to 800? I would imagine uh, MDAs. But if you ask me, I think for the challenge that we we'll have now, it's critical we match agencies together because uh, some agencies have like uh, likely uh, or, or what it looks as if they are doing the same thing, double job. I think by so doing, that will help. So it's a good one if we match some agencies. All right. Now, um, he's scrapping, there's a potential uh, scrapping of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. What do you believe are the key factors driving this potential scrap altogether of the ministry? Um, what do you think it could be? Because now, first of all, there was a suspension of the, the minister of that uh, ministry. But what, what are your thoughts on what could possibly be the reason? Right. I think it would be a very, very bad thing. For me, I recall in my thesis, I, I, I did uh, research on poverty reduction in Nigeria. And one of our recommendations is to start alleviation pro, uh, programs. And that's what actually President Mohamed Buhari did, because he actually institutionalized, because you recall during Obas Joy, it was called NAPEP, during Yaradua, wealth creation, during Jonathan, it was uh, you win, and during uh, uh, President Mohamed Buhari, it was NS, NSIP, but he was able to institutionalize poverty reduction program. So I think it is wrong to really if you want to scrap any ministry, should it be humanitarian and disasters uh, uh, management uh, ministry? Should have been other ministry, not this one, because this one is actually what we need to institutionalize. Because you recall, we will continue to have poverty reduction program. So who is it? Where is the agency that is going to supervise, you know, anchor it and do a lot of things? So I think it's important to retain our humanitarian affairs and also maybe now scrap some other agencies. It is important that we maintain this uh, humanitarian. Hmm. And and speaking of uh, just how important it is, uh, we hear of a you know possible cabinet reshuffle. How might the pro uh, the proposed cabinet reshuffle impact the effectiveness of governance and most importantly public service delivery in Nigeria? Right. If you ask me, I will, I will even say it's coming a little bit late because I was expecting after the appraiser one year appraisal of those ministers by now we shall have that reshuffle. It has a lot of benefits. One. If there is a particular uh, ministry or agency that is not performing well, the best let that person or let someone that will perform better comes. And by the time you do it for two, three persons, other will sit uh, well and make sure they perform their uh, civic duty. You recall that you also have an essay on uh, uh, public administration. Uh, is it Aisha? I want to that was of that. So I was thinking they are going to appraise them, the KPI, key performance uh, indicator, to make sure that they actually do what they are supposed to do. I think we are that level in Nigeria whereby if you don't perform, you need to go within a year. So it's a good one in the right direction. Now, okay, so besides just reshuffling, right, one has to ask the question, is reshuffle then the answer? How can the government best address the concerns of citizens, Nigerians, when it comes to regarding or rather regarding underperformance, you know, among ministers? Because you might reshuffle and you might take, for example, minister, uh, minister, uh, the Minister for Women Affairs to say, I don't know, a minister, one other ministry, and then they don't perform or they still give the same performance. I mean, what informs this type of decision and what's the best way to address it? Right. Well, in as much as we believe the technocrats are those directors that work in that agency, but the thing is, the leadership is very, very key. I can mention some ministry for you that you could hear them, they are doing something because of the person there. It's not about being, but that person studying what is evil money. No. It's about that person having have a, a team lead spirit and be able to uh, uh, govern it and garner our interest to make sure we achieve our aim. So I think if anyone is not living, uh, I mean, pro uh, providing services as expected, it's enough to let that person go. So I think it will actually bring us more plans. And ask if it will affect the citizenry. You know, policy direction is very, very key in the life of Nigerian citizens. So if you have the right policy direction, I think we have a better way to go. So I think it's a good one. It's a welcome idea. All like President Bola, I mean, Muhammad Buhari, but good eight years never have a major reshuffle, never give anybody out, change anybody because of low performance. And you can see,
the, most of them, the performance was abysmal, and there's nothing we can do. So I think if he can do it early now, it will help him to really, really perform. All right. Well, many thanks for doing this with, with us, Ali. We appreciate you for coming. Ali, Ali is there. He is a politi political affairs analyst and he joined us just to discuss more on a possible reshuffle and the scrapping of the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Once again, many thanks. We switch gears now. The Inspector General of Police, Kayade Egbetokun, has redeployed Police Commissioner Tim.